ിട്ടി peace to the mind peace to the physical peace to the vital peace to the emotions and peace to the people all around the world page 454 the book of fate the way of fate and the problem of pain canto 2 even pain and grief are garbs of world delight it hides behind thy sorrow and thy cry because thy strength is a part and not god's whole because afflicted by the little self thy consciousness forgets to be divine as it walks in the way penumbra of the flesh and cannot bear the world's tremendous touch thou criest out and sayest that there is pain indifference pain and joy a triple disguise attire of the rapturous dancer in the ways withhold from the the body of god's bliss thy spirit strength shall make the one with god thy agony shall change to ecstasy in difference deepen into infinity's calm and joy laugh nude on the peaks of the absolute
O mortal, who complainest of death and fate, accuse none of the harms thyself hast called. This troubled world thou hast chosen for thy home, thou art thyself the author of thy pain. Once in the immortal boundlessness of self, in a vast of truth consciousness and light, the soul looked out from its felicity. It felt the spirit's interminable bliss. It knew itself deathless, timeless, spaceless one. It saw the eternal lived in the infinite. Then, curious of a shadow thrown by truth, it strained towards some otherness of self. It was drawn to an unknown face peering through night. It sensed a negative infinity, a void supernal whose immense excess imitating God and everlasting time offered a ground for nature's adverse birth. And matter's rigid, hard unconsciousness harboring the brilliance of a transient soul that lights up birth and death and ignorant life. Page 455 A mind arose that stared at nothingness till figures formed of what could never be. It housed the contrary of all that is. A knot appeared as being's huge sealed cause, its dumb support in a blank infinite.
in whose abysm spirit must disappear a darkened nature lived and held the seed of spirit hidden and feigning not to be a eternal consciousness became a freak of an unsoul almighty inconscient and breathed no more as spirit's native air bliss was an incident of a mortal hour a stranger in the insentient universe as one drawn by the grandeur of the void the soul attracted lean to the abyss it longed for the adventure of ignorance and the marvel and surprise of the unknown and the endless possibility that lurked in the womb of chaos and in nothing's gulf or looked from unfathomed eyes of chance it tired of its unchanging happiness it turned away from immortality it was drawn to hazardous call and dangerous charm it yearned to the paths of grief pathos of grief the drama of pain perdition spiral the wounded bear escape the music of ruin and its glamour and crash the savior of pity and the gamble of love and passion and the ambiguous face of fate
a world of hard endeavor and difficult toil and battle on extinctions perilous verge a clash of forces a vast incertitude the joy of creation out of nothingness strange meetings on the roads of ignorance and the companionship of half known souls or the solitary greatness and lonely force of a separate being conquering its world page 456 called it from its too safe eternity a huge descent began a giant fall for what the spirit sees creates a truth and what the soul imagines is made a world a thought that leaped from the timeless can become indicator of cosmic consciousness consequence and the itinerary of the gods a cyclic movement in eternal time thus came born from a blind tremendous choice this great perplexed and discontented world this haunt of ignorance this home of pain there are pitched desires tents griefs headquarters a vast disguise conceals the eternal's bliss then ashwapati answered to the seer 
is then the spirit ruled by an outward world? O seer, is there no remedy within? But what is fate, if not the spirit's will? After long time fulfilled by cosmic force, I deemed a mighty power had come with her. Is not that part the high compere of fate? But Narad answered, covering truth with truth. O Ashwapati, random seem the ways along whose banks your footsteps stray or run in casual hours or moments of the gods. Yet your least stumblings or foreseen above, infallibly the curves of life or drawn following the stream of time through the unknown. They are led by a clue the calm immortals keep. This blazoned hieroglyph of prophet mons, a meaning more sublime in symbols, writes than sealed thought wakes to. But of this high script, how shall my voice convince the mind of earth? Heaven's wiser love rejects the mortal's prayer, unblinded by the breath of his desire, unclouded by the mists of fear and hope. Page 457 It bends above the strife of love with death. It keeps for her a privilege of pain. A greatness in thy daughter's soul resides that can transform herself and all around, but must cross on stones of suffering to its goal.
although designed like a nectar cup of heaven of heavenly ether made she sought this air she too must share the human need of grief and all her cause of joy transmute to pain the mind of mortal man is led by words his high sight retires behind the walls of thought and looks out only through half opened doors he cuts the boundless truth into sky strips and every strip he takes for all the events he stares at infinite possibility and gives to the plastic vast the name of chance he sees the long results of an all wise force planning a sequence of steps in endless time but in its links imagines a senseless chain or the dead hand of cold necessity he answers not to the mystic mother's heart misses the ardent evings of her breast and feels cold rigid limbs of lifeless law the will of the timeless working out in time in the free absolute steps of cosmic truth he thinks a dead machine or unconscious fate
a magician's formulas have made matters lost and while they last all things by them are bound but the spirit's consent is needed for each act and freedom walks in the same peace with law all here can change if the magician choose if human will could be made one with gods if human thought could echo the thoughts of god man might be all knowing and omnipotent but now he walks in nature's doubtful ray yet can the mind of man receive god's light page 458 the force of man can be driven by god's force then is e a miracle doing miracles for only so can he be nature's king it is decreed and satyavan must die the hour is fixed chosen the fatal stroke what else shall be his written in her soul but till the hour reveals the fateful script the writing waits illegible and mute fate is truth working out in ignorance
O King, thy fate is a transaction done at every hour between nature and thy soul, with God for its foreseeing arbiter, fate is a balance drawn in destiny's book. Man can accept his fate, he can refuse, even if the one maintains the unseen decree, he writes thy refusal in thy credit page, for doom is not a close, a mystic sea, arising from the tragic crash of life arising from the body's torture and death. The spirit rises mightier by defeat. Its godlike wings grow wider with each fall. Its splendid failures sum to victory. O oh man, the heavens that meet thee on thy road, though they smit thy body and soul with joy and grief, are not thy fate. They touch thee a while and pass. Even death can cut not short thy spirit's walk. Thy goal, the road thou choosest, are thy fate. On the altar, throwing thy thoughts, thy heart, thy works, thy fate is a long sacrifice to the gods, till they have opened to thee thy secret self and made thee one with the indwelling God. O soul intruder in nature's ignorance, armed traveller to the unseen supernal heights, thy spirit's fate is a battle and ceaseless march against invisible opponent powers, a passage from matter into timeless self. Four fifty nine. 
adventurer through blind unforeseen time a forced advance through a long line of lives it pushes its pure head to the centuries across the dust and mire of the earthly plain on many guarded lines and dangerous fronts in dire assaults in wounded slow retreats holding the ideals ringed and battered fort or fighting against odds in lonely posts or camped in night around the bivouac fires awaiting the tardy trumpets of the dawn in hunger and in plenty and in pain through peril and through triumph and through fall through life's green lanes and over her desert sands up the bald moor along the sunlit ridge in serried columns with the struggling rear let by its nomad vanguard signal fires marches the army of the way lost god then lay the joy ineffable is felt then he remembers his forgotten self he has refound the skies from which he fell at length his friends indomitable line forces the last passes of the ignorance advancing beyond nature's last known bounds reconnoitering the formidable unknown beyond the landmarks of things visible it mounts through a miraculous upper air till climbing the mute summit of the world he stands upon the splendor peaks of god in vain the monist that satyavan must die his death is a beginning of greater life death is the spirit's opportunity 
a vast intention has brought two souls close and love and death conspire towards one great end for out of danger and pain heaven bliss shall come times and force in event god's secret plan this world was not built with the random bricks of chance page 460 a blind god is not destiny's architect a conscious power has drawn the plan of life there is a meaning in each curve and line it is an architecture high and grand by many named and nameless masons built in which unseeing hands obey the unseen and of its master builders she is one queen strive no more to change the secret will times accidents or steps in its vast scheme bring not thy brief and helpless human tears across the fathomless moments of a heart that knows its single will and god's as one it can embrace its hostile destiny it sits apart with grief and facing death affronting adverse fate harmed and alone in this enormous world standing apart in the mightiness of her silent spirit's will in the passion of her soul of sacrifice her lonely strength facing the universe
her lonely strength facing the universe affronting fate asks not man's help nor god's sometimes one's life is charged with earth's destiny it cries not for succor from the time bound powers alone she is equal to a mighty task intervene not in a strife too great for thee a struggle too deep for mortal thought to sound it question to this nature's rigid bounds when the soul fronts nude of garbs and infinite it's too vast a thing of a lonely mortal will pacing the silence eternity as a star uncompanioned moves in heaven astonished by the immensities of space traveling infinity by its own light the great or strongest when they stand alone a god given might of being is their force a ray from self solitude of light the guide the soul that can live alone with itself meets god its lonely universe is their universe தமிழ் வரிகள் வை திரு எம் பி பண்டிட் அவர்களின் சாவித்ரி மகா காவிய சாரம் சத்தியவான் இறக்க வேண்டும் என்பது விதிக்கப்பட்டுள்ளது அதற்கான நேரமும் குறிக்கப்பட்டு மரணத்தை விளைவிக்கும் அடியும் தீர்மானிக்கப்பட்டுள்ளது அக்தின்றேல் வேறு என்ன நடக்கப் போகிறது என்பது சாவித்ரியின் ஆன்மாவில் பதிவு செய்யப்பட்டுள்ளது களத்தில் மெய்மை தனது நோக்கத்தை தானே உழைத்து நிறைவேற்றிக் கொள்வதே விதி எனப்படுகிறது மனிதன் அவனுடைய விதியை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளலாம் அல்லது ஏற்க மறுக்கலாம் இறுதியில் மனிதனுடைய ஆன்மா எதை தேர்ந்தெடுக்கிறதோ அதுவே விதியாகும் மனிதனின் தலைவிதி அவன் கண்ணுக்கு புலனாகாத எதிரியின் படையுடன் போராடி இறைவனை நோக்கி முன்னேற வேண்டும் என்பதே வழியில் எத்தகைய விபத்துகளை சந்திக்க நேரிட்டாலும் அவற்றால் மனம் தளராமல் அவன் விடாப்பிடியாக முன்னேற வேண்டும் இறுதியில் அவன் அறியாமையின் கடைசி எல்லைகளை கடந்து இறைவனின் பேரொளி வீசும் சிகரங்களை சென்றடைவான் 
சத்தியவான் இறக்க வேண்டியுள்ளதே என்று வருந்தாதீர்கள் அவனுடைய மரணம் மெய்யாகவே மனிதனுக்கு ஒரு மேன்மையான வாழ்க்கையை தொடங்கி வைக்கும் இறைவனின் திட்டத்தை நிறைவேற்ற அனைத்தும் ஒன்று கூடி செயலாற்றுகின்றது இந்த உலகம் அங்கொன்றும் இங்கொன்றுமாக சேகரிக்கப்பட்ட செங்கற்களால் உருவாக்கப்பட்டதல்ல புலனாகாத பரம்பொருளின் ஆணையை சிரமேற் கொண்டு இவ்வுலகை உருவாக்கும் கொற்றர்கள் பலர் அத்தகைய கட்டிடக் கலைஞர்களில் முதன்மையானவர்களுள் சாவத்ரியும் ஒருத்தி ராணியே இறைவனின் இரகசியமான விருப்பத்தை மாற்ற முயற்சிக்காதே சாவத்ரியின் தெய்வீக சக்தியூட்ட பெற்ற வாழ்க்கைக்கும் அவள் எதிர்த்து நிற்கும் வலிமை மிகு விதிக்கும் இடையே குறுக்கே புகாதே உன்னுடைய உதவியோ அல்லது எதாகிலும் ஒரு கடவுளின் உதவியோ அவளுக்கு தேவைப்படாது தானே தன்னை காத்து கொண்டு இவ்வுலகத்தையும் காப்பாற்ற துணை ஏதுமின்றி தன்னந்தனியாக அவள் போராட வேண்டிய நாள் ஒன்று வரக்கூடும் அவளுடைய தனித்தன்மை வாய்ந்த தீர்மானத்திலிருந்து அவளை பிறழ்வுற செய்ய முயற்சிக்காதே அவளை அவளுடைய வல்லமை மிக்க ஆன்மாவிடமும் விதியிடமும் விட்டுவிடு ஸ்ரீ அரவிந்த அன்னையே இந்த மாலை பொழுதில் எங்கள் அனைவரையும் உங்களுடைய பாதார விந்தங்களில் ஒன்று சேர்த்து உங்களின் ஒலியையும் உங்களுடைய சக்தியையும் எங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையில் வெளிப்படுமாறு நாங்கள் உங்களின் திறவுகோளாக இருக்க செய்துள்ளீர் அன்னை இது ஆரோவில் என்னும் புண்ணிய பூமியில் நடைபெறும் ஒரு யாகம் இந்த யாகத்திற்கு வந்திருக்கும் அனைவரையும் ஆசீர்வாதம் செய்து ஒவ்வொருக்கும் உங்களுடைய பாதுகாப்பையும் அன்பையும் பொழியுமாறு பிரார்த்திக்கின்றோம் நன்றி Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Lord.